Hey YouTube, in this video we're going to talk about critical numbers. I'm going to write down the definition of a critical number and we'll look at some examples. So we say x equals c is a critical number. So is a critical number of f of x if it is a number in the domain of f of x so it has to be a number in the domain of f of x such that. So a critical number has to be a number in the domain of the function. That's super key. So even before we define the conditions, that's kind of like a prereq. So a critical number has to be in the domain. So it's a number in the domain of the function uh, such that one of two things happens. Either the derivative is equal to 0 at that number or the derivative is undefined there. f prime of c is undefined. So a critical number is a number in the domain of the function where the derivative is 0 or the derivative is undefined. Just for example, say you had 1 over x, right away you know that 0 could never be a critical number because 0 is not in the domain of the function. Or if you had 1 over x plus 2, right away you would know negative 2 could never be a critical number because it's never in the domain of the function. By the way, x equals 0 and x equals negative 2 are both vertical asymptotes. Therefore, easy way to think about it, vertical asymptotes can never be critical numbers for functions because at those numbers, the function is undefined, right? So a critical number is a number where the derivative is 0 or undefined, and a prerequisite to the definition is that um, it's in the domain of the function. Let's do some simple, simple examples of finding critical numbers. Uh, just tricky, simple examples. So find, let's call them CNs, just to abbreviate things. So find CNs, find critical numbers, if any, right, if possible. There might be none in these examples. So A. By the way, there's a, there's a what are critical numbers for? There's a big uh, result in mathematics. It says, if you have a relative maximum or a minimum, you have a critical number. So relative maximums and minimums are Y values that are bigger than the points around them or smaller than the points around them. So relative to the points around them, that's the biggest y value. Relative to the points around it, that's the smallest y value. So if you have one of these, you have a critical number. So as we go through these examples, uh, we'll, we'll investigate the graphs. So let's look at f of x equals uh, x squared. x squared. Okay, so this is a, a quadratic function, right? x squared is a parabola. The domain is all real numbers. So solution, let's find the critical numbers. So to find the critical numbers, you take the derivative and you set it equal to zero. So the derivative of x squared is 2x, right? You just use the power rule. All right, so a critical number is a number in the domain where the function is undefined, where the derivative is undefined, or equal to zero. In this case, the derivative is never undefined, okay? So we set it equal to zero. We can solve this by dividing by two. So we get x equals zero. So 0 is a number in the domain of the function where the derivative is 0. So this is a critical number. If you look at the graph of x squared, it's a parabola. It would make sense that the derivative there is 0 because you have a horizontal tangent line. Remember, the derivative is the slope of the tangent line. So you have a horizontal tangent line at 0. Therefore, the derivative should be 0 when x is equal to 0. In this case, you have a relative minimum here. So you have a relative minimum because this y value is smaller than the points around it. Remember that thing I mentioned earlier, if you have a relative minimum or a maximum, um, you always have a critical number. It doesn't go the other way, well, as we'll shortly see. So this is an example of a function that has a critical number at 0 and does have a relative minimum. Let's do another example. How about uh, this one, b? f of x equals x to the 2 thirds. Okay, x to the 2 thirds. So the domain of this function is all real numbers, no problems. Let's take the derivative. So here we bring down the 2 thirds and we subtract 1. So 2 thirds minus 1, it's really 2 thirds minus 1, so it's 2 thirds minus 3 thirds, so it's negative 1 third. Okay? And we set that equal to 0. You'll notice that uh, you can rewrite this, this derivative as 2 thirds times 1 over x to the 1 third. Right, you can bring this down and the exponent becomes positive, 
and you set it equal to zero. This has no solution. There's no way you can get zero from this. Uh, but this derivative is undefined, right? This is this is undefined, undefined at x equals zero, right? It's undefined at zero. And zero is in the domain of the original function. So this is actually a critical number. So x equals zero is a critical number. Sneaky, right? Sneaky stuff. So this is an example of a function that has a critical number that arises from the derivative being undefined. If you look at the graph of this function, it looks like this. So what is that? It's called the cusp. What's a cusp, that? It's called the cusp. cusp. So you see, in this case, you do have a relative minimum. Right? So you have a relative minimum. So this is a good example. You have a function that uh, has a relative minimum. And uh, the critical number arises because the derivative is undefined. It's a little bit different uh, than the previous example. Let's do another example. So another one. C. Let's look at this one. f of x equals um, 1 over x. So the domain here is all numbers except 0. So 0 could never be a critical number. So how do we do this? We start by taking the derivative. So to take the derivative of this, you first write like this. Okay. Then you go ahead and differentiate. So you bring the negative down, so you get negative x to the negative 2, and we set this equal to 0. So rewriting this derivative, right, we just subtract 1, right? Negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2. So this is never equal to 0, right? That will never be 0. Um, but this is undefined at 0. So this is undefined at x equals 0, right? This is undefined at x equals 0. However, 0 is not a critical number of this function. And the reason is uh, 0 is not in the domain of the original function. So in this case, there are no critical numbers. So you have to be really, really careful. So when you're looking for critical numbers, you take the derivative, you look at it. You ask yourself, OK, is it undefined? If it is the possible critical number, you set it equal to 0. Look for those answers. You take all those numbers, the ones where it's undefined and where it's equal to 0, and you ask yourself, are they in the domain of the function? If they are, they're critical numbers. If they're not, then no good. So in this case, it's never 0. It's undefined at 0. However, 0 is not in the domain of the function. So fail, no critical numbers. Let's do another one. D. How about this one? f of x equals x cubed. x cubed. x cubed. By the way, that had a vertical asymptote at 0, right? 1 over x. I forgot to mention it looks like that, right? So not even defined there, right? Doesn't make any sense. So x cubed. So let's take the derivative. Oh, this is defined everywhere, right? x cubed is a nice pretty graph. It's a polynomial, so the domain is all real numbers. When you take this derivative, you put the 3 in the front, so you get 3x squared. This is never undefined, so we're not going to get any critical numbers by looking to see where that's undefined. It's not equal to 0. We can solve this for x by dividing by 3, so you end up with this. You divide by 3, take the square root, so you get 0. So 0 is a number where the first derivative is 0. Then you ask yourself, OK, is 0 in the domain of the function? Well, yes, it is, right? So in this case, this is a critical number. So this is a critical number. This is an interesting example because in this case, you have a critical number. But if you look at the graph of x cubed, looks like that, right? So um, there's no max or min, so there's no min or max at x equals 0. So this is an example of a function that has a critical number but does not have a relative max or a min. Right? You might say, what? You said it did. No, no. If you have a relative max or a min, then you have a critical number. If you have a critical number, that doesn't mean you have a max or a min. So again, if you know you have a max or a min, uh, then you know you have a critical number. But if you have a critical number, that doesn't mean you have a max or a min. So it only goes, it only goes one way. So I hope this video helped uh, your understanding of critical numbers. So recap, critical numbers are numbers in the domain of the function where the function's derivative is zero or undefined. So again, critical number, it's a number in the domain where either the derivative is zero or the derivative is undefined. So they're numbers in the domain of the function where the derivative is undefined or it's zero. Derivative is undefined or it's zero, and they have to be in the domain of the original function. Super, super key. Thanks for watching this video. I hope it's helped uh, someone out there, and thanks for visiting my channel. Uh, that's it.